So, good day. <clears throat> In this video we will continue to talk about brushless AC generators. So, if you remember something that limiting uh, the life limiting factors Actually, in AC generators, we have two limiting uh, life limiting factors. These are brush wear and uh, ball bearings wear. However, in the brushless AC generators, we have only one limiting factor, and this is the sp this is the ball bearings life. Yeah, because brushes does not exist here. The next problem uh, associated with brushless AC generators is that their size is bigger. This is due to the fact that uh, they actually consist of three electrical machines. Main generator in the middle, yeah, pilot, a primary exciter as well as pilot exciter. So, in order to reduce weight as well as in order to increase lifetime yeah, of the generator service life, we have to do something with ball bearing life. So, if we would like to <clears throat> reduce weight, then we have to increase speed. If we will use speed of 24,000 RPMs, then we need only two pairs of poles. So the size of the rotor will be the minimum possible. If we are satisfied of using 12,000 RPMs, the size will be bigger because we have to use, in this case, four poles. Yeah, inside in the rotor. If we will use six poles, then we have to rotate generator with the speed of 8,000 RPMs. If we will use eight poles, then we have to rotate generator with the speed only 6,000 RPMs. So, from one side, in order to reduce size, we have to increase speed. From other side, if we increase speed, then bow bearings will not survive. So, where is the solution? The solution is oil cooling. So, let's take a look onto this machine which has oil cooling <clears throat> as well as oil lubrication, instantaneous. So, this is also <clears throat> brushless AC generator. Again, it consists of three electrical machines. Main generator is in the center. The primary exciter is from the right, here is the drive shaft. Yeah. And from the left we have a rotor of the PMG or of the pilot exciter. So all these components are put inside. So the primary exciter is rotating here, main generator is rotating here, and the pilot exciter is rotating here. So the rotor of the main generator has four poles only one pole, the second one from there, the third one, and the fourth was from the back. Yeah. So here is the rotor of this generator. Yeah. As you can see, we have four poles. Yeah. And each pole has its own field winding, which is wound across the poles. Yeah. All these field windings are connected in series. Yeah, in series. So we need only two contacts to supply field current onto this rotor of the main generator. So the field windings also can be seen from here. These are cut it out. Yeah? So this is the one pole and the field winding is cut it out. Field winding receives power from the rotating rectifier. The rotating rectifier is above the primary exciter. So it is here, yeah. It has uh, six diodes in order to provide full wave three phase rectifying. So, rotating rectifier from the inside looks like this, yeah. Six diodes. And from the outward, yeah, here in this slot, we have armature winding of the primary exciter. So, when primary exciter rotates, AC is generated, this AC is supplied to the rectifier and from the rectifier we got DC which is supplied to the field winding of the main generator. <coughs> this is the 
armature windings of my generator. These again are fastened inside in the slots. Yeah, and the cross section area of the armature windings are the cross section area is much more bigger compared to fill winding, which is here. So again, yeah, there is nothing new. These windings, these coils, are field windings or uh, poles yeah, of the primary exciter. So these windings are north, east, north, east and so on poles, uh, so much poles, which generate static magnetic flux in which, in which uh, primary exciter is rotating. The power again is supplied, the power to the voltage regulator again is supplied by means of permanent magnet generator. So these are permanent magnets. Yeah, these are permanent magnets. And these permanent magnets are rotated, rotating inside in this part. So this is the field generator, yeah. <laughs> and this is the armature winding of the pilot exciter or not the primary pilot exciter or also it is called uh, PMG so as you can see there is nothing new compared to the pre previous generator which has been discussed during pre in the previous video yeah, with air cooling so what's new is here the new is the speed as you can see we have only four poles, two pairs of poles. Therefore, this generator has to rotate with the speed of 12,000 RPMs. It means that ball bearings will not survive. To overcome this problem, here we have oil cooling. Oil is supplied from here. Yeah? Oil is supplied from the drive. So, from this side, we must have drive of our generator. Yeah. So oil is supplied here. Further through this pipeline, yeah, through this pipeline, oil is supplied into the ball bearing. So ball bearing is continuously lubricated, as well as this ball bearing is continuously cooled. Since it gets cooling of the oil by means of oil, it can stick, it can be sized and therefore it can operate with much more higher speeds. The next benefit is that this ball bearing becomes lubricated and therefore we do not have to relubricate them. Yeah? We do not have to fill them with, with a grease. So, some parts of oil will escape from the ball bearing from yeah from the ball bearing from here yeah and uh, another part of oil the majority of part of oil will go inside in the hollow rotor further uh, this oil some part of this oil will go back to the drive however the another part of oil through these nozzles, here, here, and here, through these nozzles, will go inside in the rotor. It will be sprayed inside in the rotor. Maybe we can see something there. If I will get an, uh, sufficient focus, yeah. So, it the oil becomes sprayed onto the windings. This becomes cooled, and further, oil, will escape from these openings yeah from these openings and also from here from these openings and from these openings so oil is spreaded inside in the generator because the rotor is rotating the spreaded oil form like a mist and this mist will cool armature windings it will cool also some part of the uh, primary exciter. Pilot exciter do not have to be cooled because it's still cool. Yeah? Also, this nozzle is used to cool rotating rectifier because diodes 
always produce some heat. Further spray it inside oil goes down and from this part it goes into this part of the it's like a carter yeah and further oil is sucked out from the generator actually this is really significant because if the generator will be filled with oil for example up to this level then rotor will rotate inside in the oil but oil has much more uh, bigger viscosity compared to air so it will produce extremely high drag and therefore extremely high temperatures will be rising up therefore generator will overheat yeah? so it's very significant to not overfill the drive which should to be here yeah? because otherwise drive will not be able to uh, pump out all this oil so generator is not filled with oil we got only mist which comes from these openings yeah? and further uh, all oil becomes sucked out from the generator here is the wall generator yeah? as you can see here, is, here we have three rotors yeah? main generator also with openings yeah? for the oil streams primary exciter with rectifier inside yeah maybe we will be able to see nozzles of the oil probably not but these are there inside yeah. these openings these openings these are for the balancing so we can put some messes inside in order to balance the rotor and this these are permanent magnets yeah these are permanent magnets permanent magnets by itself are made of iron however this part is made of aluminum because this is not a magnetic conductor yeah so if i will put this magnet it will attach here however it will not attach here because this is the aluminum again this is made of iron because this is the magnetic conductor of the pole yeah magnetic conductor of the pole and this also is made of iron because this is the magnetic conductor this is the magnetic conductor of the armature winding of the primary exciter yeah because windings are here okay what about the case case is made of aluminum so my magnet doesn't attach to this case here. Yeah? This is the pipeline to supply oil inside from the back of the generator inside into the ball bearing. So this greatly help us to save weight of this generator. Yeah, of course these are terminals yeah? to connect the generator to to buses and yeah? to AC bus. The another source of saving weight is the is that we actually we have only one ball, only one ball bearing from the front we do not have any ball bearings at all so this wall does not this wall does not exist it means that we save approximately uh, five to ten percent of the overall mass so this rotor requires drive drive which should be installed from here and yeah? requires drive and the drive have drive has a uh, bow bearing yeah so actually we have only three bow bearings two in the drive and one in the back of a generator but we do not have bow bearing here and we do not have any walls from this side yeah? so this help us to save weight from other side when we attach drive from this side it is possible that our oil will leak somewhere here from the ceiling yeah so this of course, of course this is the problem the oil pressure is approximately in this generator is approximately two bars only yeah so <clears throat> it is 12,000 rpm generator it is 30 kilovolt ampere it has 30 kilovolt ampere power yeah so 30 kilo kva 
but its mass is uh, less than 15 kilos. It's approximately 13 kilos only. It means that we got approximately 2 kilovolt amperes per 1 kilogram. So, as to me, this is a really great uh, improvement in the mass. Yeah. So, this is the generator from the previous discussion. This is the 7.5 kilovolt amper, and this one is 30 kilovolt amper. This one is the rotating armature. This one is brushless, so actually the generator is only here. Yeah. So such small compared to this. This one has air cooling. Yeah. Here's the opening windows to facilitate air cooling and yeah, to supply air. This one is oil cooled. So you can see that dimensions are almost the same. However, this one is only 7.5 kilovolt amperes and this one is 30 kilovolt amperes. So, thank you.